Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. In recent big pictures, we have shown your army in action all over the world. Today, we're going to tell a different story. We're going to take you to Washington, D.C. Here in the nation's capital, there are many thousands of important army activities. Let's take a look at some of them. This is the Washington we all know and recognize, the capital of our nation the beautiful city with its famous landmarks. This is the visitor's view of Washington. But across the Potomac River, there is another side to the story, the military aspect. Its heart is the Pentagon building. This is where the highest officers in your army perform the duties and make the decisions which will affect every soldier in uniform. Surrounding the Pentagon, there are other military buildings. This is T-7, headquarters for the military district of Washington. Major General Stokes commanding. Let's go inside for a few words from the general. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the nation's capital and the military district of Washington. I hope you will enjoy your visit with us. Although we will not be able to show you all of the interesting tasks performed by our soldiers, we have selected some of the highlights, which we think will have a special appeal to our big picture audience. You will find here in the shadow of the Capitol that the men and women of your army are daily performing a great variety of interesting jobs. In some cases, they are perhaps unique in the army. You will see and become familiar with some of them and with the men and the women who perform them. You will also see evidence that we have not lost sight of our more serious mission, that of training our soldiers to peak efficiency to prepare for the defense of their country. Perhaps the most famous of all the military units here in Washington is the 3rd Infantry Regiment, whose origins go all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Today, they are marching across the apron at the military air transport terminal to welcome General Augustin Munoz Grandes, Minister of the Army of Spain. As the plane touches down, the third snaps to attention. Whenever world figures come to Washington on affairs of state, our government must always be a good host. On such occasions, a great deal of the responsibility falls on this unique Army unit for it is one of the many duties of the third to welcome these important personages with honor and ceremony, to greet them in behalf of the United States. As the Spanish Minister of the Army steps from his plane, General Ridgway personally welcomes him. There is a brief moment for a warm exchange of greetings before the formal military reception. All the rifle butts slap as one, and the third renders a salute to a military man from a friendly nation, and the honor is returned. With the exchange of salutes over, the third prepares for inspection. The United States Army Band strikes up a lively march as the commanding officer of the reception detachment leads General Ridgway and the Spanish minister around the ranks. Only hand-picked officers and men are to be found in the ranks of the third. Serving in this regiment is a high honor, and it is not everyone who can qualify. Always in the public eye, appearance and deportment must be letter perfect. Such things are taken for granted in the third. To the foreign dignitaries who see them, they represent the United States Army. They must be the best. 
The inspection over, General Grandis takes his leave of the detachment commander and heads for Arlington National Cemetery and the tomb of the unknown soldier. Here he is destined to encounter another activity of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. On the steps of the amphitheater leading down to the tomb itself, there takes place a simple ceremony. A detachment from the 3rd serves as honor guard for the proceedings while the Spanish general pays tribute to an unknown American soldier who died in the service of his country. The great of many nations have rendered such honor here, a tribute to an American soldier known but to God. The general departs, but let us stay and meet the soldiers who stand guard over this hallowed ground. Situated directly beneath the amphitheater is the tomb guard room. Waiting is part of any guard mount. But of course, there are always chores to do, too. Shoes in particular get a treatment guaranteed to better the best shine in town. One of the men is just now preparing to relieve the guard on duty. A last minute check in front of the mirror. All set, let's go. This changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier has become a Washington tradition. It is such a simple ceremony and yet an impressive one. There is a quiet dignity in the way commands are given. There is pride in their execution. Because these men are constantly before the public, they are carefully chosen from among volunteers of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. They must be between 5 feet 11 inches and 6 feet 2 inches in height. They must have no physical disabilities or any disciplinary action against them on their record. Misconduct as trivial as a traffic violation in the city of Washington is sufficient to cause removal from the guard. Visitors from all over witness this changing of the guard, some 4,000 a day during the summer months. These are honored soldiers with an honored duty to perform. With the changing of the guard completed, the old sentry returns to the guard room for some well-earned rest, while the new sentry begins his tour of duty. At strict attention, he walks his post. At each end of the tomb plaza, he executes the manual of arms. And here is one spectator who is obviously impressed. One hour on and three off, 24 hours a day. This single sentinel walks this post and considers it an honor to do so. That's the way it is in the third. This unique regiment has many duties and often participates in the varied activities of the nation's capital. For a real parade, they're a must. In inaugural parades, they serve as the presidential honor guard. To the men of the third, Pennsylvania Avenue is as familiar as the drill field back at their home station, Fort Myer, Virginia. But everybody has seen a parade. Let's go now and take a look at some of the more unusual activities of this unusual regiment. Our big picture cameras have now moved to historic Mount Vernon on the high bluffs just south of the city of Washington. Here you are about to meet the ceremonial color sergeants of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. Beside me is Lieutenant David H. Rumbo, Assistant Operations Officer of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. His family has been Army all the way. Lieutenant, I believe that your family, as a matter of fact, goes back to the revolutionary days, and I can't think of anybody more qualified than yourself to explain the tradition behind this uniform which these members of the ceremonial color guard wear today. Thank you, Sergeant. The uniform worn by the members of the color guard of the 3rd Infantry is an exact replica of the uniform worn by the enlisted men of the regiment in 1784. This is to remind the members of the old guard of the long and proud history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment. You will notice that certain distinctive items of the uniform, such as the powder box, the canteen on the man's left side. The regimental crest of the 3rd Infantry is an infantry officer's cocked hat of the period 1784. 
The knapsack strap worn on the left shoulder of the uniform is a holdover from the War of 1812 when the 3rd Infantry stood up before the regiments of British and were marked only by this colors of buff and black which are perpetuated today in the knapsack strap, a quarter inch strip of leather in the same colors of buff and black. Well, thank you for describing the uniforms, but what are some of the other traditions, Lieutenant, that characterize the 3rd Infantry Regiment? Well, during the Mexican War, the 3rd Infantry received the name of the Old Guard from General Winfield Scott. After it had stormed the heights of Telegrafo Hill at Bayonet Point, we were given the honor of marching in every parade with fixed bayonets. That's why today, when you see the 3rd Infantry Parade, we always march with our bayonets fixed. The name Old Guard actually was given to us by General Winfield Scott when he said to the members of his staff as the 3rd Infantry marched by him, Gentlemen, take off your hats. There goes the old guard of the Army. Well, thank you very much, Lieutenant Rumble. And we must travel along to visit other activities here in the military district of Washington. Now, here is a job you wouldn't expect to find in our modern Army. And it's just about the only job of its kind left. But here at Fort Myer, it's a very important job. For stationed here is just about the only cavalry left in the American Army. Seven of these perfectly matched graves draw the caisson in full honor funerals at nearby Arlington National Cemetery. The caisson, too, gets its share of attention. Polish and elbow grease keep it in perfect order, for it bears the casket of the fallen hero. This is the caparison horse, riderless with cavalry boots turned backwards in the stirrups of an empty saddle. It follows behind the caisson in the funeral procession. We've now moved to a position immediately adjacent to Arlington National Cemetery here at North Post, Fort Myer. Off to my left is the cemetery, and we have asked the non-commissioned officer of a detail that has been on funeral duty over here in the cemetery to report to us at this position that we might be able to talk to him. He's due along here any minute. This is Sergeant Roger Gregory, section leader of the Quezon Detachment here at North Post, Fort Myer, Virginia. And this is Big Boy. Roger, we have seen already some of the caparison horses here in the detachment, but I'm wondering if you could explain in detail a little bit more about their significance. It comes from the ancient times when it was believed that a riderless horse would follow his master to the grave. Actually, today it's a symbol of respect used in funerals of cavalry officers and general officers. Uh-huh, well, how long have you yourself been with the detachment? Fourteen months. Fourteen months, and uh, specifically, what is your job during the funeral procession? Well, I ride the lead horse. I'm out, right out in front of the uh, section. I on the way to the graveside. Has Big Boy always been the lead horse? Right. How long have you ridden him? Thirteen months. Incidentally, just how old is Big Boy? Cost me nine years old. Uh-huh. Well, I've been wondering how, uh, how long are these horses kept in service and what happens in the way of replacements for them later on? Some of them work is up to the age of 18, some 20 years of age. Come on, man. Actually, then, these are the remaining few in the Army today. They are. And so we have here today a living symbol in Sergeant Roger Gregory and Big Boy of the mounted service that goes back to the early days and the founding of our nation. Every Sunday on the drill field at Fort Myer, the 3rd Infantry Regiment holds a review and invites the public to attend. The band that accompanies the regiment at these functions is the same band that welcomed General Grandis at the airport. It is the United States Army Band. It is another of the unique organizations in the military district of Washington. Since its creation, the Army Band has led a varied and distinguished career. Open air concerts are given each summer in the city and are enjoyed by thousands. It is the Army Band that leads the inaugural parades. Besides these duties, it has represented the United States Army at many musical functions and celebrations throughout the world.
that road is off of here. Paced by the United States Army Band, the old guard passes in review. Not all the troops in the Washington area are stationed here for show and ceremony. Many fill jobs that are vital to the defense of the city. Let's visit with some of them. In the suburbs surrounding Washington, there are many anti-aircraft batteries such as this, ready for action 24 hours a day. Battery commander of Charlie Battery of the 14th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion is 22-year-old Lieutenant David Lacey. Lieutenant, we have mentioned the overall picture of the Army Anti-Aircraft Command being our first line of defense. But just where does your battery fit into this picture? Well, Sergeant Queen, I would say that we here around Washington are in the last line of defense rather than the first. I say this because I feel that if the enemy is able to penetrate our other defenses, and get through, then it would be up to us to protect the capital. Living here in the backyards of some of our neighbors in the residential area of our nation's capital, have you had an opportunity to become acquainted with them? Uh, yes, we have. Even though, as you know, we have to stay only a few minutes away from the guns, we have found time to become quite acquainted with our neighbors. We have, uh, have open house here at, at least once each year where we invite the folks in and show them around the area. And we have uh, a couple of ball teams who have practice on our diamond down here during the summer. You mean the teenagers have come over and joined some of the men here at the battery in playing ball? That's right, they have. Oh, good. And even some of the young fellows uh, across the road have come over and played football with the guys here. And I think we are fortunate in having some very fine neighbors. This constant alert status uh, more or less, uh, must keep the men pretty much on their toes. And I've been wondering, do they ever get an itchy trigger finger during these battle stations? Uh, no, they don't. We realize that that's a problem, however. So we have a schedule whereby each unit can go up to the firing range, which is in Delaware. And up there, the men can actually fire the guns and, as you might say, give that trigger finger a good workout. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Lieutenant, but thank you for coming by for just a minute and filling us in on the details of your battery. You're welcome. Thank you. Now I think we'll just stand by and take a look at some of the activities that take place here in a typical gun sight of Charlie Battery of the 14th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion. Firing tactics up on the range are necessary, but football tactics are important too especially when you've got to spend all your time on that same little piece of real estate. Then it's the neighbors that count. And kids especially are always good for a fresh approach. Here's some new tactics that are bound to succeed. And there's the payoff. Though the city of Washington may be only a few minutes drive away, these soldiers seldom get the chance to enjoy it. They must find their recreation right here at the battery and as the lieutenant said, it's the neighbors that make it enjoyable. But all good things must come to an end. Somewhere on the screen of an early warning radar set, an unidentified aircraft has been picked up. It is probably friendly, but it could be an enemy bomber. The AA command can take no chances. To these men, alerts such as this are routine. They happen every day. So far, they have always proved to be only an alert. But men and guns are ever ready. But what are those other Washington soldiers, those proud men of the old guard? What would be their mission in time of emergency? 
Here in a third infantry orderly room, the duty sergeant receives a phone call. This regiment has been called out on a practice alert. At the barracks, the men hop too. Off the locker tops come field packs and combat gear. This will be as close to reality as training will allow. Over at battalion headquarters, the CO briefs his officers. This particular mission is carefully explained. Then the alert orders are given. This regiment, the 3rd Infantry Regiment, has been ordered to execute Plan Able. This battalion will move without delay to positions as directed in the defense plan. Back at the barracks, the men take their rifles. And then the heavier stuff, too. Bazookas, recoilless rifles, mortars, and machine guns. Everything has been carefully planned for this moment. In an emergency as on parade, split-second timing plus teamwork pays off in performance. These are the same men, the ceremonial troops, the color guards, the sentries, and the caisson detachment. And those qualities that made them the best ceremonial soldiers make them the best combat soldiers, too. Down at the tank park, the alert is also sounded, and 3rd Infantry tankers prepare to move out. If this were a genuine attack, the 3rd Infantry's primary duty would be defense of the capital and protection of the nation's leaders. And so today they follow a prepared alert plan, simulating this mission. Heavy caliber machine guns are mounted, engines revved up and communications tested. Old guard tanks get ready to roll. While the tanks rumble to their destinations, trucks pull up to receive the infantry. There is an attitude they've got here in the old guard. You begin to feel it after you've been around them for a while. They are determined to be the best at anything they tackle. That's what makes them good soldiers. That's why these men are in the third. And that's why the third is in Washington with so many important duties to perform, including the defense of the city. With the Pentagon for a backdrop, tank elements race down the main highways to establish roadblocks at critical intersections. No tickets for speeding today. In the real thing, swiftness of movement would be essential. Now, really only minutes after the alert was first sounded, the various elements of the third have carried out their respective assignments as given in the prepared alert plan able. Tanks are eased into their positions for effective fields of fire. And now, with the nation's capital, under the guns of friendly forces, the alert is over. You have seen only a glimpse of what goes on here in Washington. You have visited only a few of the many military installations around the city. And now, every evening, the people who work in all these places go home to rest and recreation. But elsewhere, there are others who will not rest tonight. At the anti-aircraft batteries, the watch is kept. The guns point into the evening sky. They are still now, but always ready. The Pentagon is quiet, too. The offices are empty. The day's work is done. At the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a solitary bugler sounds taps.
Army Band, the anti-aircraft batteries. All these are a part of the Washington scene, a part of the military life that gives the nation's capital its color and vitality, a part two of the nation's defense. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at the big picture, the United States Army in action. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.